Uh, what can I say? You are so outstanding that I, I really, like, this is over. We can go now. I mean, you're really so good. And, I, you know, was it hard to get back into the Gala mode? It was, it, it's the, only, the strangest thing about it was that, um, got, you know, you know, when we did the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I, I, I couldn't have been prepared for how Gollum was absorbed into public consciousness so much and, and how many people would come up to him on a regular basis and ask me to do Gollum or, you know, do their impersonations. And I've seen so many YouTube clips of, of Gollum being sweeted and, you know, I mean, so, so owning him again, possessing him, kind of pull it, because of course, as an actor, you've just got to rein it right in and kind of feel it from the inside. And, and I was, almost felt like I was doing an impersonation myself for the first day, but, you know, it, it, we pretty soon got back into it. Yeah, I've always wondered how many people come up to you and say, can you leave, leave my voicemail for me? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that happens on a regular basis. I can't yeah. even imagine. What was the major differences? I mean, let's put it this way. You, you know, you, when you did Lord of the Rings, it was a good 10 years ago, you mm. know, a while back. Now you're playing him again, but the differences in terms of the technology and the way Gollum is different, what was the be thing that happened for you that you know yeah. blew your mind doing him this time? Well, I mean, uh, obviously I've been part of the way that the t technology's kind of uh, uh, changed over the last 12 years, in fact. And um, so so basically, to, in a nutshell, what we used to do in, in Lord of the Rings days was film my performance on 35 millimeter, on, you know, on film with the other guys, Elijah Wood and Sean Astin, we'd all act together, but then I'd have to go and repeat the process on a separate stage at a later date in a motion capture suit. This time around, you know, 12 years later, I, the scene that I did with Martin, I'm wearing a head-mounted camera. It's full performance capture as opposed to motion capture, which means it's capturing the facial expressions at the same time. So we only had to, ever had to do it once. And, and all of the interaction was, was therefore much more connected and feels much more real. And of course, the, 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 the look of the character, the muscles, the way they work, and all of that has been refined over the years as well. So there's a real fidelity to, uh, to what I'm doing, with, you know, the underlying performance. Yeah, and Gollum's like a spring chicken in this what he's 60 years younger he's right so sexy now I mean it's you know I mean it, it's uh, it's really nice to actually play the heartthrob for a change you know seriously I have been <laughs> campaigning for that forever yeah really Gollum for like leading man seriously gosh it's gotta happen Andy um, I understand that that was Martin's first scene that he it shot was, working was with you so what was it like working with a newbie it was it <laughs> he's no newbie he's that he's that no but it was good I know what you mean he He's such an inventive actor, he's brilliant, and uh, we had great fun. And it was, yeah, like you say, in 276 days of shooting, it was day one, and we shot for two, for, you know, for two weeks on that scene. But every time we did it, we, we shot it as one long take. So we, it was really like doing a piece of theatre, you know? And, and, and so we could invent, and Martin is, he, he can move around and change. And he was trying to define the role of Bilbo while we were doing this. So it was, it was really exciting kind of coming up with new stuff every single time and different inflection and different, you know, different meaning and different way of playing the, each moment. It was, it was great. Amazing. Um, your comfort zone with Peter Jackson, obviously, you guys probably finished each other's sentences at this point. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Amazing. Almost. And he, you know, he gave you such an honor, Andy, that you were able to direct some of the film. Tell me about that. And... Wow, what an, an amazing experience. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, he's known, he's known that I've wanted to direct for, for quite some time, and, and uh, I was, you know, I've, over the years I've been directing video game projects and short films in the theatre, and, and was just about to start off directing my first feature when he said, look, will you come down and do the second unit on this? It'll give you great experience. And my God, did it ever. I mean, it was like 200 days of shooting uh, with the most extraordinarily kind of developed technology and a huge crew and great cast and shooting aerials and battle sequences and as well as drama and I mean it was a, I couldn't have wished for more. Wow so I think we have a, a director in our midst now? I, I, well, that's certainly the, the, what I'm heading for. I mean, we have a, I have a studio in, in London now, the Imaginarium, which is a performance capture studio, which uh, which also is a development company where we're, you know, we're, we're creating our own projects. So, so that's one of the next thing I'm doing. Actually. Oh, good. I look yeah. forward to that yeah. for sure. Uh, what, how does the, you know, shooting in the frame rate and the 3D, how does that affect your performance, or does it? As an actor, it doesn't really affect your performance um, at all, actually. As, as obviously on the directorial side, side there, there are considerations in terms of um, with, with 3D, how, how conservative or, or you know, lavish you want to be with having things jump out at the screen, you can control the stereography. So, so things can either be have depth and you go into the, the, the scene or, or have things jump out at you. Um, for instance, stunts, you know, the battle sequences, you can't, you can't fake punches because you can see the air between the actors. So it's, everything's full contact now with 3D. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, there are there are certainly from a directorial point of view, there are, there are considerations. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, what was the most challenging thing for you as a director working on this one? Wow, uh, I have to say, probably it was logi the logistics of every day a moving schedule. Uh, you know, well, you've got the thirteen dwarves, but we need six of them on the main unit, and so you can have six stunt doubles in, and, and uh, you know, and everything shifting sands all the time, and uh, really being prepared, looking at previs and uh, you know previsualized sort of animatics of of the scenes that we were shooting and and then having to choose how you know set things up in, 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 in at a pace and I mean it's it's a yeah big well challenge. this is a big one you know yeah. it's not yeah. some little indie movie we're no. talking here yeah no, no, yeah it's kind of coming on you huge. know you obviously made lifelong friends working on Lord of the Rings Lord of the Rings and did you ever think that you were going to be back in Middle Earth <laughs> no not really no well actually let's say that you know um, the Hobbit was always gonna it was in the offing, but it was gonna take years to sort of come round, I think. And uh, but it was just just great that it finally did. You know. Why do you think people embraced it so much and are so looking forward to this film? Well, I think it, it, Lord of the Rings kind of happened at a time of you know huge kind of world change actually, and and. Uh, uh, and I think again, we're going through seismic shifts in 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 you know in the way that the, the the world, the belief systems in the world. And I think we turn to stories like this, which are very you know they're archetypal stories, they're big mythic kind of journeys, and and somehow although we're, they're in a form of escapism, they they actually say so much about the world that we live in. Yeah, you are you know bar none the motion capture king. I don't you know you are so wonderful and have come so far with everything that you've given us. And when I look at you know when I watch the um, the planet of the apes. I I just honestly thought it was a real, yeah, you were so spectacular. Andy, I want to see you win a Best Actor Oscar. Like, seriously? How do we make that happen for you? <laughs> I, I, you know, that would be lovely, of course. Uh, I think I think the thing is to, that, that as long as the education process continues and that more actors start using the technology, which is what the, what is happening, it's becoming much more used in mainstream filmmaking and next generation storytelling in other media like, like video games. You know, good actors are now working in video games because they realise that kids receive stories from video games and actually we can change and change them for the better. Um, as long as actors kind of embrace it, then I think that that's good enough for me and, and that people fully understand what it is that performance capture isn't a sort of genre of acting it's it's acting and it's just a different way of recording the actor's performance well you are so spectacular it was so wonderful to see you back in this movie and uh, always a pleasure to talk to you, you best of luck to thank you, you and thank you so much for your time thanks thank you